to Educator. Today we're going to be talking about the process of distillation. Distillation is a technique used to purify a liquid. Now, depending on what the contaminant is in that liquid, you have a couple different choices for your distillation. If your uh, contaminant is a non-volatile contaminant, so something that can't boil itself, so if you have like a, um, let's say if you have a solution of um, water with a food coloring in it, that food coloring dye is some kind of solid organic comp component that's dissolved in it, then all you need is a simple distillation to separate those two because the liquid component is going to distill over and the non-volatile component is going to stay behind in the distillation flask. Uh, simple distillation is also uh, an okay way to purify a liquid if you have two liquids with very, very large differences in boiling points. <clears throat> Uh, but for the most part, if you ever have a mixture of two liquids or more, two or more liquids, the only way you could separate them is by using a fractional distillation. So what does a distillation look like? Um, essentially, we have this, this set up here. This is some kind of heat source. Uh, so a, either a heating mantle or a Bunsen burner or something like that. Um, we're going to boil this liquid. The vapors are going to travel up here. We're going to record the temperature of those vapors. And then they're going to go into this water condenser, which is cool. And that's going to cause those vapors to condense and uh, into a liquid. And then that liquid is going to be collected into a new flask, new container. So the theory is that we have this crude liquid here, a uh, mixture of liquids or a liquid plus other non-volatile components. But the vapor is going to be pure, and so once that condenses and collects, what we're going to end up with is a pure liquid. So let's talk a little bit about um, vapor pressure and volatility and boiling points, because all these are important concepts to understand how a distillation works. So every liquid that we have is always in equilibrium with its vapor. So that means we have, at the same rate, we have the liquid, uh, evaporating and turning into a gaseous phase, and we have gas molecules um, condensing into the liquid phase. That's the equilibrium. And all the vapor molecules that we have above a liquid are exerting some kind of vapor pressure. So let's imagine we have a volatile liquid. A volatile liquid is something with a low boiling point. Something like diethyl ether has a quite a low boiling point at 35 degrees. If you have a low boiling point, that means you have a high vapor pressure. So ether is something that has lots of vapor molecules above the gas phase because it's quite volatile. I don't know how those are looking. <laughs> so um, ether has a very strong smell when you open up a can of that. You have very strong smell because it, there's so much of it in the gaseous phase. It travels really far. Um, because it's exerting a pressure and it's going to be moving out. Okay, we compare that to a uh, less volatile liquid. So here we had lots of vapor phase molecules for a very volatile liquid. Okay, but if we look at something like water, which has a much, much higher boiling point of 100 degrees, this is going to have um, a very low vapor pressure. So there's just relatively few water molecules above this um, above the liquid water, still in equilibrium. So the water vapor is condensing in the, at the same rate that the water, um, liquid water molecules are evaporating. But that's kind of the difference, the, thinking about the relationship between volatility, uh, you know, liquid's ability to, to volatilize, to turn into the gaseous phase, um, versus its boiling point. So low boiling point means high vapor pressure. High boiling point means a low vapor pressure. <clears throat> 